In 2012, I had the incredible privilege of presenting a TEDx talk where I touched on how schools are evolving with the rapid development of technology and its implementation within the classroom and beyond. I made it very clear that the internet is going to play a crucial role in the future of education while expressing concern over the inequity of the digital divide. I pointed out that if the poorest communities were given access to faster internet and affordable devices, it would go a long way to leveling the playing fields. High-speed internet would provide students with greater access to information, ideas, people, the world, and even beyond. Technology is producing opportunities at an exponential rate. We are immersed in technology and our age is, sadly, very easily identifiable by the apps that we use. While teachers are living in a Facebooking, tweeting and WhatsApping world, our students are living in a TikToking, Instagramming and Snapchatting world. Our personal growth has been quite gradual until now. Then along comes 2020. This year will be remembered for many things, but sadly, most of them rather unpleasant. The devastating bushfires in Australia, volcanoes erupted, major earthquakes and floods, two airliners crashed. Even the Duke and Duchess of Sussex applied for a separation from the royal family. We also had the George Floyd incident, social unrest amongst many others. But to top it off, the COVID-19 pandemic put a stranglehold over the world. Schools, businesses and borders literally shut down. Frontline medical personnel are putting themselves in harm's way to save lives every day. Teachers had to be upskilled overnight. They had to offer distance learning. Education was forced to contemplate the idea that change is possible. But if the truth be told, it is inevitable. 2020 has not just brought us heartache, it has given us the gift of 2020 vision. We have been blessed with an opportunity to look through new eyes and to revisit the way we educate our students, conduct business and deal with people and how we shape the students today for the world of tomorrow. We have a chance to redesign and innovate the way forward. I want to place a spotlight on education for now and in order to develop a plan on how best to prepare our students for the workforce of tomorrow, I believe we need a three-pronged approach. Address, assess and adjust. Let's focus on each one. Address. We need to discuss and plan for the future trajectory of education regarding the ever-changing job market. We must strategize on how we are going to educate our students. Will it be in person, online or perhaps a hybrid of the two? Are we going to push for access to high-speed internet and affordable devices? How are we going to mold the leaders of tomorrow and provide them with the tools and the requisite skills that they need to reach their full potential? We need to ask the tough questions on what skills our students must have to play a meaningful role in society. It's time to engage in robust debate on possible ways forward. Is university still the end goal? Will degrees play an important role in landing jobs of the future? Now we move on to assess. We have to honestly examine what is relevant and what is missing from our curriculum. When we are preparing our students for the future, we need to take a very hard look at where we have failed 
and how we can improve. We need to test out various modalities. Did we cope with teaching and learning during lockdown? How effective were the various digital tools? What were our greatest obstacles? What did we do well and where can we improve? And now we move on to adjust. We need to commit to making changes and move with the times. Education needs to keep up with a rapidly changing world. It is evident that there is no point in teaching students with 19th and 20th century methodologies and curriculum while we are living in the 21st century. We are the custodians of the legacy that we want to leave behind for future generations. Now is the time to show leadership. We need to be bold. Over the past few months, students around the world experienced the convenience that comes with access to the internet and the ownership of a device. It is growing evident that the use of technology is changing how we teach, how we learn, and how we conduct business. Some examples include distance learning during COVID-19, MOOCs, which are massive online courses, artificial intelligence, which is AI, differentiated learning for people of different levels, webinars, workshops, online conferences, festivals, tournaments, video conferencing, and even TEDx talks like this one. Global collaboration is flattening classroom walls and allowing students access to resources and allowing them to engage with international peers. Technology is being incorporated into so many parts of our lives and especially in education. We must expect a massive growth in video apps, software to curate our work portfolios, design programs that allow us to create projects from an idea to a 3D prototype, project-based learning tools that allow groups to collaborate simultaneously, gamification of content and a very wide variety of additional digital tools. It is inevitable that the adoption of technology is going to accelerate the evolution of education. If we are ready to climb out of our comfort zones, we will achieve real growth. This is the perfect opportunity to make changes now for the benefit of generations to come. But wait, this comes with a warning. Education in the future will involve humans interacting with each other. We need this as a species. We must ensure that when we innovate how we educate, we should never forget education was created by people for people. The importance of human connection is critical. We cannot allow for quality education to be denied to so many due to poverty. Our new models must include equity and access. An increase in technology should not correspond with a decrease in humanity. Education will need to promote empathy, problem solving and creativity. We must use technological tools to solve problems and not create new ones. Education must leverage the technology to improve the learning experience and ensure maximum outcomes. We need to think creatively on how all students with varying levels of ability can participate effectively in their own education. Let us encourage the redesign of the problems that need to be solved. We must move away from how many cupcakes Jenny will have left over to working out how can we ensure that students do not arrive at our schools with no food in their tummies. When COVID-19 hit, schools around the world were caught off guard. Teachers and students proved that with creativity and grit, innovative solutions were found. Many valuable lessons have been learned by all. Stop and ask yourself the following. Should students even return to school? 
Should teaching return to how it was before COVID-19? Should schools use the COVID-19 experience as a foundation for change? Do you think your school is brave enough to be a pioneer in education? And will teachers ever be ready to walk away from the mute all button? My message to schools is the following. Innovate and redesign yourselves now. Schools 2.0, this is your chance to be a part of the wave of change that you want to see in your students. You cannot preach innovation and creativity without practicing it yourself. Schools 2.0, take a moment and ask yourself, are we preparing students to complete a curriculum or to enter society with useful knowledge and skills. Schools 2.0, we need to ensure that students will still have real life interactions with teachers and friends and not just have online classes. Schools 2.0, this is our chance to create an environment where all students, irrespective of economic circumstances, color, country of origin, sexual orientation or creed, are welcomed as valued members of the community because diversity makes us stronger. Schools 2.0, if there ever was a time to show leadership, it is now. I wish you all the best of luck.